I'm Kristen Ward, and welcome to Maquette Vallant's Summer of Stories, Episode 8, the final episode for Season 1. If you enjoy the show, please like, share, or subscribe below. Donations to the project and future storytelling events are also greatly appreciated and can be made at paypal.me forward slash kwardstorydance. I consider myself blessed to be around stories and storytelling my whole life. As a child, trips to our local library were frequent, and I was enchanted by fairy tales long before I even registered the existence of singing mice. I remember the magic of hearing stories told live from a babysitter who spent a hot summer day telling a bunch of restless kids about a land called Narnia, to regular school trips to Ganondagon, where a Seneca woman would tell us about Sky Woman and how the world was formed on the back of a turtle. One of my favorite storytellers, of course, was my grandfather, who inspired this piece, The Devil and Jack Morgan. One in a million. It's a phrase I've heard a million times to describe someone, but in my grandfather's case, it was true. My grandfather was storyteller, fisherman, and one of the world's great gentlemen all rolled into one. He was also a musician, and one of his most prized possessions was an old banjo with silver detail. He brought it with him whenever he and my grandmother came to visit, and my brother and I spent many an hour listening to him play. Everything from old standards to improvisational riffs to silly songs about girls from Syracuse. One evening, after dinner, my brother and I sat listening to Grandpa play as our mother and grandma chatted in the kitchen. And we asked him where he'd gotten that banjo. His eyes sparkled as if he had been waiting his whole life for us to ask just that. And he said, now, I'll tell you the story, but you have to promise that you won't let on to your grandmother that you know. And my brother and I quieted in anticipation of a great forbidden tale. A long, long time ago, when I was just a youth of 16, I skipped class one day to go fishing in the creek. I sat there on the bank minding my own business, watching my line and daydreaming about that blue-eyed blonde who sat across from me in arithmetic class, when suddenly my line went taut. Now, it didn't feel like a fish, but it certainly felt big, and I knew it must be something pretty good. And so I reeled, and I pulled, and I hauled, and I reeled, and I pulled, and I hauled. The next thing I knew, I was up to my waist in the creek holding on to a big, muddy case. Well, I hauled myself and the case back up onto the bank, and I opened it to reveal this very banjo. Now, I wasn't much for music before, but there was just something about this instrument lying there in that case, and it sang to me. I couldn't help myself. I just reached over and very gently plucked one of the strings. Next thing I knew, there was a bang and a terrible flash of red light, and the devil himself was standing right behind me. He was just like my Sunday preacher had warned me about, red as blood, with empty eyes and a forked tongue, and horns like a big ram's. And the devil said in a booming voice, Jack Morgan! This banjo here has been lying in this creek for 20 years, just waiting for you to come and make it sing again. And I'll tell you what, in exchange for your soul in 10 years, I'll make you the best banjo player in the world. 
just think of yourself playing every night at the Grand Ole Opry to thousands of your biggest fans. What do you say? Well, young men at 16 throughout history have done some things that weren't very bright. And I was no exception. I looked at this banjo with its silver detail just gleaming at me. And I thought of that blue-eyed blonde standing there waiting for me in the wings every night. And I plucked one of the strings again and I heard the echoes of thousands of fans clapping and shouting for me to keep on playing. And so I looked at Lucifer, squared my shoulders, and shook his claw. And as I did, a hot blue light traveled from him all the way up my arm. The devil grinned and said it was done and vanished in a puff of smoke. And I began to play the best in the world. Well, I could have dueled with Eddie Peabody, king of the banjo, and won. I went home to show my mother what I could do, and she tanned my hide, once for skipping school, and again for telling tales about the devil. She did admit I was pretty good, though, and she made me promise that if she let me keep that banjo, I would finish school before following my dreams. And so, I took my new strings to school with me the very next day. And when that pretty blonde smiled at me from across the room, I got up the nerve to ask her if I could walk her home. Later that afternoon, I played, Where'd you get those great, great big eyes? And she laughed and smiled and rolled her eyes and said, Oh, Jack. And right then and there, I knew the Ina Riggs was the only fan I'd ever need. By the time five years, half of my time had passed, I had a diploma, a wedding ring, a baby girl on the way, and while I still strummed every night for an adoring audience, I had forgotten all about the Opry and the deal. Then one day, exactly ten years from the day I met the devil, he came knocking at our door. I was upstairs with your mom and your uncle, and Ina was in the kitchen preparing dinner. She opened the door and stood there just gaping at the devil, with a cast iron frying pan in one hand and a stick of butter in the other. Now, your grandmother has always been stubborn even in her youth, so she collected herself right quick and pretty soon the gape turned into a glare and she said, Lucifer, this is a good Christian home. We are members in fine standing at the Mohawk Reformed Church, which we attend every Sunday. What do you want here? Well, I'm here for the soul of Jack Morgan, the devil replied. He sold it to me ten years ago for that banjo of his and the talent to play it, and I'm here to collect. Well, at this, your grandmother just squared herself off and called out in a voice full of brimstone and ice, Jack, you get down here and tell me you did not sell your soul to the devil. Well, I went downstairs with my head hanging because I knew I was in deep trouble any way you looked at it. And your grandmother just shook her head at me and looked back at the devil and said, Well, I guess you've been had. Now wait a minute, said the devil. I had a deal here and I'm not leaving without the soul of Jack Morgan. Your grandmother just kept glaring at him, and she said, Now look, devil, Jack made that deal with you ten years ago in May. Now, seven months before that, 
night in September, I first noticed him across the room from me in arithmetic class. And he might have been too shy yet to come and talk to me. But that day I saw him, I knew that God had made him just for me. And so you see, devil, that deal you made in May was invalid, as his soul was not his to sell. Now, you go on and get out of here, as you are not welcome here. And with that, your grandmother hauled off and swung that half-buttered cast-iron frying pan as hard as she could, and cocked that devil so hard one of his horns shattered into dust. He let out a howl that would make a banshee blush and continued screaming and howling all the way back to hell. Well, nowadays I can't play quite as good as I used to, but I still have my banjo. Your grandmother still has my soul. And we never saw hide nor horn of the devil ever again. As we sat in stunned silence, my brother and I heard a voice from the kitchen call out, Jack, what on earth are you telling those children? Grandpa just smiled, settled his banjo on his lap, and began to play. I knew a girl from Syracuse, she got drunk on lemon juice. Oh, you might not have been king of the banjo, but we were his biggest fans. I eat my peas with honey, I've done it all my life. It makes peas taste funny, but it keeps them on my knife. Some of you might remember this song from the story Chasing Tales in episode one. That song and The Girl from Syracuse are just a couple of the silly ditties that I heard growing up. What songs do you remember from your childhood? Tell us about them in the comments below. Or make a video of yourself singing with your family and post on Facebook or Instagram with hashtag MVStoryDance. Telling that story and thinking about those old silly songs really made me want to listen to a little bit of banjo music again. And since I don't have one around here, and you've already been forced to listen to me sing, I called up Pittsburgh musician Charlie Anderson. Hi, Charlie. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how folks can find you? Uh, <laughs> folks finding me is hard these days. My webpage uh, went down a long time ago and I never did anything about it. So on Facebook, I'm on Facebook. And I have some of my music posted up on Facebook. And some of it is, is even me playing a banjo, believe oh, it or not. great. But uh, I've been playing the banjo, uh, well, I'm gonna show my age here, about 50 years, I guess. And I can't even explain why I first wanted to get a banjo, but I was teaching guitar at the time in a music store and they had a nice deal on a banjo and uh, I bought it. I don't know, I'm really not even sure why. <laughs> Except that I had heard somebody playing a banjo and just really liked the sound of it. So I, I bought a banjo and then I started trying to learn how to play it. So I got these books on how to play the banjo and I seemed to like be making some progress until I actually went down south where they actually really play the banjo. People know how to play the banjo. And I heard people playing the banjo down there at some music festival down in Galax, Virginia, where they play music for about a week. They camp out and they just play music constantly. And I heard a lot of banjo players and I said, I don't sound anything like them. <laughs> go back and like get some recordings and learn how to actually play the banjo. Because what I had been doing was nothing like what they were doing. So I now play the banjo in a style called um, claw hammer banjo, oh, okay. old time banjo. Most people are more familiar with the bluegrass banjo, which I did attempt at one point and realized I couldn't move my fingers that fast, <laughs> or my brain. 
because bluegrass players play really fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, old time players play really fast too, but they get all those fast notes a lot easier with just a finger and a thumb, where mm -hmm. bluegrass players use thumb and two fingers. Too hard for me. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot, a lot to, to figure out. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've been teaching banjo now for the last 30 years. Uh, I taught banjo classes at Calliope, the Pittsburgh Folk Music Society. Of course, now that's um, all gone with the COVID-19 thing, so. Right. We're bring it back online. We're, we're hoping to bring it back online. Oh, that'll be great. So if people really want to learn how to play the banjo, they can maybe eventually check out calliopehouse.org. Uh, and uh, they'll be posting what they're doing, and hopefully they'll have banjo classes again. Sounds great. And I'll, I'll post the link in the description, too. So I was inspired a lot in my youth by silly folk songs that ah, some of them my grandfather made up outright, and some of them um, he had heard, you know, all his whole life, too. Uh, do you have any favorite funny folk songs that you heard he growing up? He made up songs, huh? <laughs> well, I've made up a few, too, and one of them's kind of funny, but uh, I thought, well, I thought I'll do a traditional one that um, I don't even know when I first learned it. Um, it possibly could have been at the piano. <laughs> my family, when I was growing up, was kind of musical, and uh, my mom played the piano. And so Friday night was music night, and we all gathered around the piano and sang songs from these different books of folk songs, like mm -hmm. Songs to Grow On, More Songs to Grow On, and Ruth Crawford Seeger's book, I forget what it's called, but a lot of songs in there. I'm thinking that maybe my first encounter with this song was there, but I'm not sure. Um, the first time I heard it played on the banjo was by a, a folk song guy named Michael Cooney. So uh, this is called Old Molly Here. And um, I wanted to play it for you for a special reason, actually, not just that uh, it's a funny song, but it's also a pretty good illustration of how the banjo uh, sort of tells an American story about our muse. Um, and the part of the story that it tells here with this tune is the Scots and Scots-Irish, which my ancestors were Scots-Irish, came over from Ireland. And that's another story. <laughs> Brought their music with them. And this is one tune that has been collected in Scotland, in Ireland, and in the Appalachian Mountains. And uh, the Appalachian Mountain version sounds a little different, but very, very close to the Scottish version. The Scottish uh, Musicians call it uh, the fairy reel. Okay. Um, you know, fairies are something important in Ireland and Scotland, but not in the Appalachians. So there they call it Old Molly Hair. And they have funny words to it, and it goes like yeah. this. <laughs>
great. That's a lot of fast finger work. That's a lot of, a lot of fast notes in there, yeah, but I, I wasn't even playing it. Now, I sort of almost got it up to dance tempo, but it's really dance music uh, is where this music found its home. And in this country, we call it square dancing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can hear that, that rhythm in there. So down, down south, that's still um, actually a big uh, social occasion, though. When we went down to Virginia um, to that Galax um, festival. That I, and you, what you do is you go and you camp there, mm -hmm. the campground, and you stay, people stay up all night playing music all night long. Oh, <laughs> so when we went down there, my cousin who lives in Georgia met us up there. And uh, she, she, she knew the country side around there pretty well from uh, her youth. And uh, she took us uh, way back in the woods somewhere, <laughs> back in the mountains somewhere, mm -hmm. where somebody had built a dance barn, and they had regular weekly dances there, and they played this music that people danced to. So that's that's the where the life of the music comes from, dancing. Now, when we were setting up the interview, um, I thought it was really interesting because the story I just told about beating the devil can be found in all different cultures throughout the world. And banjos are too. Uh, in fact, you have an African banjo. Do you want to show it to us? Oh, yeah. I have that here. Um, it's made out of a gourd. I don't know how much of it you can see. But you can see that's that's the gourd part there, and on the back is inscribed uh, there. <laughs> a uh, you can see maybe if you can see it, it's a bird. It's an African bird. They call it a guinea fowl, which is sort of like a chicken. And I'm not sure why there's a chicken on the back of my man's show, but, but the guy that made it thought it would be cool, so he put it there. And the really fun thing about this man show. It's all natural. It's beautiful. I can uh, hear a little bit of different sound to it, too. I have a real different sound. It's made out of wood. Of course, the head is a skin, and the gourd is like a gourd. <laughs> so there's no metal parts in it at all. People have gotten more interested in uh, the origins of the banjo um, since Pete Seeger uh, mentioned his name because probably everybody's heard of him. Almost single-handedly revived the banjo back in the 50s. Um, the banjo has like a, a kind of patchwork story, life story uh, as to how it got to where it is today. But the short version is it probably originated with an instrument called the Akanting in West Africa. And um, the Akanting uh, looks very much like this. It uses a gourd and it has a long stick for a neck and it's played exactly the same way. The Akanting is only a recent discovery. It practically disappeared from the face of the earth at one point. It was only a couple of families in West Africa that still played them. And, uh, some um, uh, banjo players and musicologists uh, got uh, wind of it and they said, wow, this is exciting because this is just like a banjo. This is probably where the banjo came from to America. 
by way of the Caribbean. The Caribbean slave trade was where the West African slave trade first came to this continent was. Mm -hmm. And then it came up here into the United States. And it went through a lot of changes. Obviously, they still don't make them out of gourds. They make them more like this now. Mm -hmm. A lot of metal parts in there, and um, people are making all types and styles of these banjos, depending on the style of music that people want to play on. But I've never heard that they're particularly associated with the devil. That seems to have been reserved for the fiddle. Well, thank you so much, Charlie. Oh, hey, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I can't wait to, to actually have time to view your story. Yeah. And thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this inaugural season of Summer of Stories, please be sure to subscribe right here to be among the first to know when new content is added to this channel. I hope to announce more projects and events soon. In the meantime, you can catch up on any missed episodes right here.